All right, so I got some pretty surprising news here for you guys because the New York Times, along with several other top publishers from around the world, have now officially come out after being silent on this issue for years and said that Julian Assange should uh, have the charges that are brought against him dropped by the Biden administration. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just read through some of this breakdown here directly from the New York Times in terms of what they're actually saying and why they think this. And then we're going to get into a response here from the Biden administration and a little bit more background in terms of how Julian Assange has been treated over the last number of years. So here from the New York Times, they say major news outlets urge the U.S. to drop its charges against Assange. So what are they talking about here? They say the New York Times and four European news organizations called on the United States government on Monday to drop its charges against Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks founder, for obtaining and publishing classified diplomatic and military secrets. They say in a joint open letter, the Times, The Guardian, Le Monde, Der Spiegel, and El Pais said the prosecution of Mr. Assange under the Espionage Act sets a dangerous pres- precedent, no shit, that threatened to undermine the First Amendment and freedom of the press. They say, quote, by obtaining and disclosing sensitive information when necessary in the public interest is a core part of the daily work of journalists, the letter said. And if that work is criminalized, our public disclosure and our democracies are made significantly weaker, 100% accurate. And keep in mind, okay, you know, while this is the first time that I've seen any of these major outlets actually come out in defense of Julian Assange aggressively like this and actually signing a letter straight to the Biden administration, Um, This same exact notion that this was a threat to the First Amendment or a threat to free press if he was prosecuted is something that even the Obama administration knew almost a decade ago. Okay, so even the Obama administration back in, I think it was like 2012, uh, came out and essentially said, their DOJ said, that um, they would not be able to prosecute Julian Assange without significantly jeopardizing the ability for other publications like the New York Times uh, to go and do things that they do on a very regular basis in order to obtain classified documents or classified information or matters of national security that are pertinent to the public interest. And that is exactly what Julian Assange did. So basically, the Obama administration was saying, if we go after Assange, you know, what would be preventing us or some future government within the United States from going out to, you know, do the same exact espionage charge against some other uh, journalist who is publishing things that the U.S. government doesn't want them to publish? I mean, this is core to what it means to actually have a free and independent, a free and independent press in a so-called democracy, right? But they continue, saying that Mr. Assange, who has been fighting extradition from Britain since his arrest there in 2019, is also accused of participating in a hacking-related conspiracy. They say the letter notably did not urge the Justice Department to drop that aspect of the case, though it said that some of us are concerned about it too. Why would you not drop that aspect of the case if some of you are concerned about it too? Okay, the notion that Julian Assange was, like, directly responsible for uh, helping Chelsea Manning at the time uh, hack into these uh, systems and obtain these documents. He was doing exactly what many other journalists who work for outlets like the New York Times do on a regular basis in terms of informing people as to how to deliver these classified documents to them, right? He wasn't like sitting on his own computer and doing this hacking himself, okay? These were documents that were obtained by Chelsea Manning and then given to Julian Assange to publish. That is what journalists do on a very regular basis. So obviously it's, you know, kind of weak-willed for them to not call out that aspect of the case as well. And also, I mean, this is something that is probably going to be a little or or, uh, uh, too little too late type of a situation here because again I mean this has been known for years this type of a threat to the free press right this is not something that the New York Times is just finding out about they've been silent about this for years and years and years now okay and keep in mind during those years I mean Julian Assange has been subjected to absolutely horrific conditions after you know he was holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy and then eventually arrested by authorities and put in Belmarsh prison one of the most maximum security prisons within Britain under brutal conditions conditions as well, so much so that according to here from Al Jazeera, they say A UN special rapporteur says that WikiLeaks founder is a victim of psychological torture. Okay, so they were essentially torturing Julian Assange in many different ways. Uh, If you look at his current mental state, his current physical state, according to his uh, uh, according to his own wife, um, that you know he's basically in a a horrible condition right now. He is significantly deteriorated during this time period. So it is pretty pathetic that it took this long for the New York Times and other supposed uh, journalists to actually come out uh, in favor of his defense. I mean, this is again something that could potentially 
potentially jeopardize your own journalists in the future. Uh, we also had the, just this wild story that dropped from uh, last year here from The Guardian. They say CIA officials under Trump discussed assassinating Julian Assange. Okay, so he was facing psychological torture. He's been significantly degraded during this time period. And then the CIA was plotting to assassinate him. Now, just a basic follow-up question to this specific aspect of the story. Do you think that a government that was planning to assassinate this man for basically just doing the work of a journalist and actually exposing the crimes of the U.S. government, do you think that if, if the same government was going to assassinate this guy, that they would be able to turn around and give him an actual fair trial? No, of course not. I mean, obviously they're biased in this, and obviously this is 100% about them being embarrassed by the information, uh, rightfully so, that Julian Assange ended up releasing, but they plotted to assassinate this guy, and you're, you know, going to turn around and pretend as if this is going to somehow be a fair trial? I mean, completely absurd at face value, right? But they continue here saying, each of the five organizations had worked with Mr. Assange in 2010 and 2011 during the events at the heart of the criminal case. Uh, and they say WikiLeaks, which obtained leaked archives of classified American diplomatic cables and military files, gave early access to the troves to traditional news outlets, which published articles about notable revelations. Okay, so again, he is a publisher. He is a journalist. He is not a hacker. He is not a, and, you know, somebody who is a foreign spy or something, which completely dismantles the notion that he should be charged under the Espionage Act. I mean, again, this guy is an Australian journalist. He's not some, you know, uh, Russian or Chinese spy or a KGB agent or something like that, right? But that's how they're, you know, treating this entire situation. They continue here, finishing off saying, the letter comes as Attorney General Merrick Garland has sought to rein in ways in which the DOJ has made it harder for journalists to do their jobs. They say in October, he issued new regulations that ban the use of subpoenas, warrants, or court orders to seize reporters' communications, uh, communications records, or demand their notes or testimony in an effort to uncover confidential sources in leaked investigations. So think about this. I mean, we are in the year 2022. How long have we, you know, put forward this pretend notion that we actually do have a uh, real free press in this country? Meanwhile, you have the DOJ that essentially, on the president's will, has the ability to subpoena all of this information from journalists and explo expose their uh, confidential sources. I mean, that just completely dismantles the notion that we have a free press, right? If the government, the DOJ, the, you know, highest uh, power in the land legally within this country is able to just unilaterally decide, no, we want to expose the people who leaked this to you so we can go after them because they leaked uh, information that is relevant to the public and is important for the public to be made aware of. I mean, keep in mind, Julian Assange was releasing things on, uh, you know, relating to war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq. Okay, that's shit that the American people should be made aware of. But, you know, I mean, even to this day, even though they're trying to somewhat undo this, the U.S. government has the ability to go after those sources. So how is that a free press? It's not. I mean, if you're if you're just you know relying on this ability to subpoena this information and target those whistleblowers or those leakers, um, and you know uh, sabotaging journalistic integrity in the process of doing that under the threat of uh, sending these journalists to prison, then that's not a free press, right? I mean, these are the, the main stories that uh, you're pushing the boundaries in terms of what it actually means to have a free press. But they finish off here saying, Mr. Assange and WikiLeaks catapulted to global fame in 2010 when he began publishing classified videos and documents related to the United States wars and its foreign relations. It eventually became clear that Chelsea Manning, a former uh, Army intelligence analyst who had provided the archives to WikiLeaks, and she was sentenced to 35 years in prison after a court-martial trial in 2013, and then President Barack Obama commuted most of her remaining sentence shortly before leaving office in January of 2017. They say Ms. Manning's uh, disclosures amount to one of the most extraordinary leaks in American history. She is an absolute fucking hero. They say they included about 250,000 State Department cables that revealed many secret things around the world, dossiers about Guantanamo Bay detainees being held without trial, and logs of significant events, significant events in Afghanistan and Iraq wars that divulged, among other things, that civilian casualties were higher than official estimates. It's still just absolutely bizarre to me that the New York Times would say significant events in Afghanistan and Iraq. I mean, these significant events that they're talking about here are just brazen war crimes. I mean, there was that one that I think was in Afghanistan of the helicopter, which 
basically went and uh, fired on this group of civilians and then waited for the first responders to get there on scene, circled back, and then fired on the first responders. I mean, that's the type of shit that we're talking about here. We're not talking about significant events, all right, as if it's some sort of like amorphous, vague phenomenon here. We're talking about brazen war crimes that were attempted to be covered up by the U.S. government and then were exposed by these absolute heroes, Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning. I mean, you know, obviously Chelsea Manning deserves to be commended for this and obviously the uh, horrific conditions that she was also exposed to. Now, we had a response here directly from the Biden administration in terms of uh, how they're viewing this new letter and viewing the current situation with Julian Assange. So let's just go ahead and listen to uh, this motherfucker, John Kirby's response to this all. Uh, we would uh, refer you to the Justice Department. All right. Uh, uh, anticipating that answer, uh, what is your assessment or what is the National Security Council's assessment of the, of the harm that was done by uh, the WikiLeaks leak in 2012? And that would inform any decision by the Justice Department. Uh, I think, you know, we, if you go back and look at how the administration responded in 2012, uh, and of course, President Biden was then vice president at the time, uh, we, would, uh, we would maintain that we that what what we said at the time, what was said at the time, that uh, that those uh, that those leaks, those revelations in the public sphere, were damaging to U.S. national security. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, listen, if you're going to say that it's, you know, uh, uh, damaging to national security, one of the uh, many lies that they came up with in order to justify this prosecution was saying that, you know, by leaking this information, they uh, potentially jeopardize the lives of American troops or undercover officials overseas. Now, first of all, you know, uh, Julian Assange went out of his way in order to try to uh, redact a lot of that information and make sure that uh, no people would actually be put in jeopardy. But on top of that, there has literally never been any evidence that a, even a single person was was harmed by this information being released uh, directly in terms of like, you know, undercover agents being exposed or troops or anything like that. Not a lick of evidence. They have not for years now been able to come up with a single example of somebody being directly harmed by this. The only harm to national security as he's portraying it here is the harm from the American people knowing the truth about all of the crimes and mishandling of these wars overseas. That's the actual harm. And that is a harm that is good. Why? Because that allows the American people to reorient their judgment about these wars and about, you know, the nature of these things on uh, foreign policy issues and then be able to participate in a so-called democracy in order to hold our elected leaders accountable. That's what it means to live in a democracy. That's what it means to have a free press. And so, you know, credit to the New York Times, credit to those other outlets, I guess, for at the last minute now, as uh, uh, Julian Assange is still about to be indicted and uh, 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 extracted and shipped back over to the United States to stand a completely unfair and rigged trial against him, uh, you know, credit to them for finally coming out at the last minute and uh, calling on him to be re uh, released. But this is something you should have been doing years ago. And uh, even though it is probably too little too late, uh, the Biden administration should absolutely listen uh, to these uh, journalistic outlets because it is a direct threat to free speech. It is a you know direct threat to the First Amendment. But on top of that, I mean, if you listen to what John Kirby was just saying in that clip, right, I mean, he's pointing out that, uh, you know, you should go back and look at what the Obama administration when Biden was the vice president was saying back in 2012. Well, I just showed you guys what the Obama administration was saying back in 2012. They were saying if we were to move forward with a prosecution of Assange, it would be a direct threat to any of these other journalists or uh, press outlets. That's what he was saying. So maybe listen to your predecessor and uh, drop these charges against Julian Assange and then, I don't know, pay reparations or, you know, uh, try to make it up somehow for the absolutely horrific and brutal treatment that he has been facing while these charges and uh, this procedure has been brought against him for all of this time. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying good politic.